As Palma looks to take the corner out, swing over the right foot, and it comes, it comes fighting through! Goal! Paulo Bernardo lights up the derby with a magnificent strike from the edge of the area! First forward, it comes to O'Reilly, he's got it under control on the turn, fires it into the beat of Kyogo, oh, yeah. Maida wants it, decides to go on alone! It was very satisfying. Obviously, at the end of December, these can be tricky games, a lot of fatigue. But plus, we played during the week, and Rangers had the the, the free week to prepare. But um, no, but it was it was a fantastic win. I thought it was deserved. Um, scored two outstanding goals. Uh, had other opportunities where we didn't maybe make the the right pass. Uh, the only downside for me was when we went to ten men. I played eleven v ten. We didn't control the game well enough, and. Um, and uh, we invited pressure on when we had to just keep our position and keep the ball moving and, uh, and really stretch the pitch. So, uh, so that was the only downside, but a brilliant day for the supporters. It was a great atmosphere here and they really pushed the team Hello on. Hello everybody yeah. and welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. I'm joined by John today to go over Celtic 2, Rangers 1. Convincing victory over the Rangers. Goals from Kyogo, Bernardo and the consolation goal for Tavernier. Puts us eight points clear at the top of the league. Uh, got to be happy with that today, Johnny. Quite ecstatic, Xander. Absolutely ecstatic. As we always are after beating them. And it's good to have you back, by the way. I know you're known keeping that well there now, but uh, I hope you can manage for at least 20 minutes a day, Xander. But uh, it's uh, good yeah. to have you back. Cheers, John. Yeah, I'll try my best. Try my best. But we'll go through the game anyway, John. Uh, in fact, before we go through the game, just to uh, congratulate the winner for the... Chris Sutton, legend frame print. That goes to Roseanne. So well done, Roseanne. I think that's the second frame print that you've won. She was bang on with her 25 minutes. So well done, Roseanne. You and the Celtic Legends frame print. Congratulations. Yeah, well done, Roseanne. Great guess. And good, uh, sorry, commiserations to everybody else that had their guesses and got it wrong. Thanks for all your guesses, everybody. And well done, Roseanne. Yeah, well done. And uh, as John says, commiserations to everybody else. Uh, so we're getting to the game, John. It was uh, Celtic looked quite bright at the start, I thought. Uh, and you were quite right with your team selection as well. We did go with Bernardo. Uh, I think you said that on uh, the preview, didn't you, that he was going to start with Bernardo. You were right. And you also said he was going to start with Welsh, so you were right there as well. So, uh, yeah... Uh, that was the team. That was that was the that was the shot. Big big Welsh. I thought done okay until we had to go off injured. But we'll get to that obviously. So we look quite bright, as I say. We look, we look quite good. Uh, and then uh, we've got the fifth minute. John, we've got a, a shot from Kyogo, and it's uh, he's thrown goal, and it's blocked and saved by Butland and goal. He saves it just by the post. But Kyogo was unlucky there. A good early chance for us. Aye, good early chance. Uh... Kind of set the standard for the rest of the game, I thought. I know Rangers had a couple of wee moments of possession, but nothing to worry, as you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we'll just fly through this, John, because in the 11th minute, we've got another chance for Celtic. It's a Bernardo header from a Palmer cross again. Uh, Palmer, he, he puts in so many lovely crosses, doesn't he? So it's a header from Bernardo. It's headed wide just by the post. Another, another chance... Uh, but we're peppering the goal early on in this game, John. Aye, it was good to see that Celtic fast out the traps. Uh, like I said, I don't think we were really troubled most of that game. So, uh, I thought that was played well. Early, out the traps early, played well. Yeah, yeah. And then we get to the 17th minute. We've got a yellow card for Alistair Johnston, which I want to pick up on because 
I think six Celtic players got booked today, John, and you know, some of them for absolutely nothing really. But uh, it seemed every time Celtic went near a Rangers player, they were getting booked for it. Now that was always going to happen. I mean, I don't know why I use the word, but look, their game was cancelled in midweek due to a waterlogged pitch. How much do you believe that? No, before no. we get into the six year old cards. No, no, it's a, it's a six day rest, wasn't it, before the play does. So they didn't play a game in midweeks, which meant which meant none of the players would pick up any injuries and the full squad had a full week uh, rest uh, to play before the play us. So yeah, that was that was quite bad. A water log pitch in this day and age, you know, we've, we've saw a lot worse rain than what we've, been, what we've been getting and that game was called off. As you said, other games had to be played but their game is called off. So, uh, yeah, that was a strange decision, I thought, yeah. Very, very odd. Uh, six yellow cards, and if you ask me, none of them was a yellow card. You know that, we'll get to that in fact. Just just continue with the next chance, Xander, because I'll, I'll get to the bits when you mention them that I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really angry at. Yeah. So, we've got another uh, shot from Bernardo. Uh, he, he played well today, I thought Bernardo. He's, he's, he's getting better every game. But anyway, he has another shot in the 23rd minute. A uh, shot wide hits the side net, and that was for about twenty yards out. So that was another. That was a third chance, still no goal. And then we get to the twenty fifth minute, where Bernardo finally gets his goal. And what a goal it was, John! It was a, uh, a goal from a corner, really. Um, ball breaks to him inside the box from the corner kick, and he just rattles it in the back of the net. John, lovely finish, but says one nothing up. Beautiful goal. Beautiful volley, absolutely beautiful volley. Um, but- I like you says, I think we're starting to see maybe a player in Bernardo. I know he's on season uh, loan for the full season, but and we have always been wondering, haven't we? Why is he no starting in games? But he's yeah. playing in the Champions League games. But now we're starting to see a player there, I think. Mm-hmm. I think you should get a different haircut though, because I keep getting them mixed up with Matt O'Reilly. <laughs> I should be, I should. And two of them wear the black gloves as well, didn't they? So yeah. Uh... But yeah, that was a lovely goal, John. Lovely goal. Puts us one nothing up. Uh, because they were obviously bumming their gums coming into this game and saying we're going to do this and do that. and You know, but it's the same old outcome, I suppose, isn't it? So, uh, mm-hmm. uh, well done, Bernardo. Lovely finish. Nice goal. But then it gets booked for his celebration, didn't he? You know, there's no, there's no Rangers fans in that crowd, John. It's just all Celtic fans. He's celebrating with the Celtic supporters. And he gets a yellow card for celebrating his first... Uh, Glasgow Derby goal. I think that see that yellow card for celebrating with the fans that should be dropped. Remember who's uh, what's his name? The guy that scored for uh, Lazio against us. He practically ran right out of the stadium and never got a yellow card for it. He's jumping there on advertising holds. He's jumping ran five mile a week because it's quite a big gap between the crowd and the pitch. Remember that? What's his name again? The guy that scored the um, immobile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tino get booked for I mean that, that it's a stupid rule. I've got nothing against players celebrating with their fans when they score. Throw it back. There's no need for a yellow card for that. That should be dropped. Same with taking your top off. What's that all about? Why why is players getting yellow card for that? Nah, strange, isn't it? But he got booked anyway, John. So that's uh, that's another player that has to watch what he's doing the full game. Uh that's Alistair Johnson booked early, Bernardo booked early, both kind of make another tackle. And this is only the, the middle of the first half. Uh, we've got Dessers throwing goal, John. Uh, Dessers throwing goal, 33rd minute. Dilly Dally's in the ball. Alistair Johnson comes back, makes a tackle. Uh, he should really have scored there, I thought. Eh? Aye, just bad player. Simple as that. I've says it all along. There's, there's no players in their team. Who, who in their team would you have playing for Celtic? Absolutely none of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Death was just a dud, another dud. And I kind of believe this Scottish media hyping that garbage up, Xander. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but we've been putting up with that for long enough, John, I suppose. But uh, and speaking of duds, we've got uh, Cantwell has a, uh, a shot and it's a, a safe for heart. A pretty easy save, I suppose. That was the 34th minute. Uh, no problem there. <laughs> No problem there. <laughs> Just laughing. Um, Speaking of duds. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> big Wazzle <laughs> Gummidge, big Wazzle Gummidge can't well. Aye, aye, he's pretty poor, isn't he? Um, then we go to the Forest Mirror, John. We've got another yellow card for a Celtic player for an, an alleged foul on Balligan, the big, solid, bad defender that goes down like a sack of toys when O'Reilly sneezes near him. 40th minute, another yellow card. That's three players having to watch what they're doing for the rest of the game, John. Aye, aye, to ask me, none of the cards were warranted. I know going into the crowd and celebrating is warranted, apparently. I don't think it should be, but again, it's not it's no a warranted, it's not a yellow card, it's a free kick. It's not a yellow card. Yeah, exactly, John, it's a free kick. Yeah, but it's not a yellow card. You don't need to, every foul doesn't need to be a yellow card. Get must get annoyed about this on my Monday day. <laughs> but every foul is not a yellow card. But the Rangers players, John, were going in with tackles. I, I, I counted some here, right? This is the fouls on Celtic players, right? Dessers fell on Celtic player. Stillen fell on a Celtic player. Cantwell fell on a Celtic player. Balligan fell on a Celtic player. And not one of them got booked for it. McCausland put Cal McGregor right up in there and they get a free kick for another one. Yeah, McCausland. Yeah, that's right. Oh dear, oh dear. Eh? Anyway, so that's another player book for Celtic. Matt O'Reilly in the book. Three players books, and it, uh, it's not even the end of the first half yet. Um, 42nd minute, we've got a save for Joe Hart. A very weak effort for that boy, McCausland. I think it was gone wide anyway, but he padded around anyway. Uh, so that was the last chance in the first half, John. We went at the, we went at half time, one nothing up. What was your feelings then? Uh, I, I was a wee bit nervous, to be honest with you, Xander. I was thinking the, the last maybe eight minutes of the first half, I thought they started coming into it a wee bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, luckily, the half-time whistle goes and uh, we get in it one nothing up, which is great. But uh, I was a wee bit concerned that we'd see Mary that in the second half, you know, them coming into it. But pff, that wasn't to be the, the case, was it? Yeah. Yeah, and obviously we had uh, Welsh had to go off from the Rocky, didn't he? That's so right, I think Big Naroki had done well when he came on, John. I thought he played quite well. I will get to that. Yeah, but I thought also Welsh played well when he was on the park. Uh, he certainly so, did. Uh, so he's not getting, he's not getting uh, much uh, luck, is he? He's no, that's two games, two injuries Welsh has had. So as you say, we'll move on, John. We'll move on. Um, so start of the second half, John. Again, we're looking bright. I think we needed that uh, halftime whistle to go. Because we came out in the second half looking bright again. Uh, and it's within two minutes of so the second half kicking off, John. We have uh, we're two nothing up. What a strike from Kyogo. Uh, um, he could have slipped in, my either, John. He could have slipped him in. But he decides to take on the shot sale And what a finish. What a goal for Kyogo. Pushes two nothing up. The wee talisman, uh, does, it, the wee talisman does it again. I thought he was going to uh, slip in Dyson Maida. But he makes the right decision. What a strike. What a strike with the left foot. Bending away for the keeper. Keeper was unlucky. He got a wee glove to it. Um, but what a strike. I don't think any keeper was getting that, Xander. That was absolutely world class, wasn't it? Yeah. Stunning. Stunning hit. What a hit. Uh, but that's uh, that's Kyogo for you, John. Isn't it? He's, uh, that's what he needs. Hopefully he can kick on now for the rest of the season, John. And start banging in the goals, obviously. Um, so we've got all these players, Celtic players, booked. John Wright, we're two nothing up, we're cruising in the game, and then you start to see the Rangers players trying to get the Celtic players in trouble. You know, players, you know, lying down, getting treatment uh, because Alistair, Alistair Johnson cleanly wins the ball, and the boy goes down. I can't remember the, the boy's names. It's still I can't remember. I was either him or Seema. I can't uh, remember. Seema, it may have been Seema. Yeah. And he's trying to get him sent off, lying on the ground all that length of time, you know, hoping that the VAR have a look at it to try and send uh, send them off. Uh, a few other players try to do it as well, just lying, rolling about the ground because uh, Celtic players that have already been booked are going in for tackles and are trying to get them sent off. I think Bernardo was the other one, wasn't he? Aye, but well, this, is, this is a new tactic they've, uh, they've got since this, what's his name, their manager, Clement. Since mm-hmm. since he came in, aye, aye. Well, they're, they're, they're a worse team than what we played at Ibrox. That's, that's the way I see it. Yeah. And, uh, but, aye, the play acting's unbelievable, isn't it? 
they're so bad. Uh, they're uh, all they've got is uh, a long ball. They have nothing but a long ball. Home for knock-ons, flick-ons, stuff like that. Many many times did they punt the ball into our box today. Aye, I, I, I've seized how long have I been saying it? You've been saying it as well. The only people that's hyping them up is the media. They're playing against teams, same teams we play against, give a different performance against us, didn't they? We've, we've said it all along, and they've proved it today. Celtic made them look like amateurs. And that's basically what they are. They're like an amateur football team. I don't rate any players in their team. Not one of them. They come to the home of the champions and they, they collapse. So if we're off form and they're in, they're on form, what does that say about them? Yeah. Yeah, that's their 16 game unbeaten run over, John. And only Celtic could do it. Only Celtic was going to be the team that uh, done something about that. And we did it with, again, yet again. We did it today. Another victory against them, John. It's, uh, it's just, uh, it's better than Rogers, isn't it? He just, he knows how to beat them. It's as simple as that. Uh, so moving on, John, moving on. We've got the 70th minute, Balogun uh, loses the ball. Kyogo wins it off him, plays through Maeda. Balogun pulls him back. An obvious red card, isn't it? Last man through the keeper, pulls him back, dies in Maeda. It's a red card for Balogun all day, isn't it? Nah, it's a nice wee one too with Kyogo and Maeda as well, but uh, mm-hmm. if that happens anywhere else on the part, it's a yellow card, isn't it? Just a yellow. But if you're the last man, automatic red, correct decision. And he got his come up for his uh, cheating earlier in the game. No, well, yeah. So, uh, so the duty 10 men, and I think we sort of, we take a foot off the gas a wee bit, I think, didn't we? We made a substitute. We've got uh, Tumble, wasn't it? Tumble, yep. Yeah, Tumble on for Bernardo. And it's it's looking like uh, we've taken the foot off the gas a wee bit. The game's in the bag, the players are thinking at this point. So, um, we'll move on. Uh, 79th minute, John, we've got... Uh, is it Turnbull gets a yellow? Yep, Turnbull gets, ye- no. yep, gets a yellow as well. That's another player has to watch his step. Make a few more substitutions. Got O on for Kyogo. Uh, Mikey Johnson on for Maeda. And Abada, it's good to see him back, John. He came on for Palmer. Aye, aye, Abada came on, aye. Um... Abada caused the, the goal, really, didn't he, that they got? He, he can a slight pass, Rangers players through, and Naroki grabs his jersey. Although he was already on his way down when he grabbed his jersey, so to me, that was a dive. Because yeah. he was already, he dived, and then Naroki pulled his jersey. So, if you ask me, it should have been booked for simulation, or is that just green-tinted specs there? Maybe a wee bit, because I thought it was a foul when I've watched it. I've not saw the replay back, mind you, but uh, I did think it was a free kick. But, you know, he's... we'll get to his goal in a wee minute, because before that, McGregor also gets a yellow card, John. So when he's that, we're up to now, five or six. So McGreg- so. McGregor gets picked for, you know. I mean, going back to Turnbull's yellow card, John, that was his first tackle in the game. That was, first, that was his first tackle. And it wasn't a yellow card tackle. But he's got a it's, it's unbelievable. Anyway, anyway. Thank God we won the day because we'd be raging if it was if it was if it was the other way around, you know, because some of these yellow cards were shocking, shocking. Uh anyway, so McGregor gets his yellow card as well. He joins the the ever grown list. And then, as you say, uh Naroki fills your man outside the box. I've got a free kick outside the box, the eighty eighth minute. Tavernier steps up, rattles it into the back of the net, makes it a nervy. Well, that was the 88th minute, wasn't it? And they added 10 minutes on, so about 12, 14 minutes still to go. Um, Aye, plenty of time there for an equaliser, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, fair do to Tavernier, because it was a good finish. It was a good goal. Uh, Hart, tried his, tried, Hart tried his best to, you know, tip it over the bar, but he couldn't get it in time. So, yeah, good finish. Nice goal, nice free kick. Um, then the last 10 minutes, John, we're throwing the keeper in the first minute of Abada. Uh, his shot was quite weak. I think he just hits it right at their goalkeeper. Um, 
ninety fourth minute, I've got a shot for Rangers. Is it Dow? Dow hits his shot over the bar. So time's running out for them, John. Uh, so still, I mean, the referee played some of the injury time, didn't he? How many minutes was that? He played on. Aye, it was 10, 11 minutes, eh? 10, 11, aye, 11 minutes. I think he played on at the end when there was only eight added on. Um, so uh, the last four or five minutes just play it, John. There's not really any more efforts in goal that I can remember anyway. Uh, and the final whistle finally goes, John. We get the win. That's all we were looking for. 2 1 victory for Celtic, John. Ecstatic then to that. How are you feeling? Ah, it's amazing, Xander. I know we're just going through the game quickly here, but. Uh... Uh, you kind of let your, your feelings get in the way of the podcast a wee bit, but uh, listen, nobody's happier in Britain or around the world than me tonight. I'm sure I'm sure there's lots of people happier, but uh, it was outstanding. It's always great to beat them, isn't it? And like we say, we had four games up until the winter break. One nay four, and I think we're going to win the league. We've got one to go. It's a tougher game, you know, it's St Mirren. They always give us a tough game for some reason. It's always us, they keep it, they keep the best. In fact, I'm just looking at the score with Aberdeen. It's, they're still beating Aberdeen 1 0 right now. We have uh, 20 minutes to go. Uh, so on the Tavernier free kick, uh, it was a nice free kick. Do you think he's the instructions there? Or uh, every time you get a free t- free kick, just imagine that's a penalty spot that you're putting the ball in. <laughs> I will. Um, he knows how to score for the penalty spot, and he's scored a few free kicks as well, hasn't he? So, uh, but anyway. It does never I'd, done him any never done him any good today anyway, John. We still get the victory, that's the main thing. And as you say, we've got uh, all the Celtic supporters, we're gonna have a good, nice, comfortable, relaxing new year. Uh eight points clear. Obviously they've still got their two games in hand, but it puts us back in control, doesn't it? Back in control, Xander, and back on top, firmly where we belong. So uh well it's a great result for Celtic today. I predicted two nothing. But that, that free kick, I still don't think it was a free kick. I think he's diving and on his way down. That's when you see the jerseys getting pulled. Um, but that kind of messed up my score prediction. I think it would have finished 2 0 if it wasn't for that. So I'm angry with that. <laughs> yeah, and, and obviously, as well, the Rangers supporters, uh, the Rangers manager, they're raging about this penalty that never was. Obviously, he was offside before he, he hit the ball out the park with his hand. He was offside, so it doesn't really matter. It was, it was never going to be a penalty anyway. If you're offside, you're offside. You can't, you can't move on to the next phase. So uh, so even after the game, they were still wanting a penalty, John. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, Tavernier was uh, dreaming of a big penalty spot there, wasn't he? But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't care if their fans are raging not that good. I mean, they've got their boxes of rockets tucked away for another day. Probably keep them for beating Livingston at home or something. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, what's yeah. that all about? Every single time they win a game, they're out having a November the fifth all over again. What's that all about? I don't know. I don't know what it's all about. But it's uh, there's an in the night, so it's nice and peaceful where I'm off anyway. So you know, I think you said a couple of times uh, the Celtic supporters do it as well. Well, I've not heard anything, John. Not a thing. Uh, we we know how to win with with dignity. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I hope all the Celtic supporters enjoy their night tonight. And I hope you enjoy your Hogmanay tomorrow night as well. Just have a great new year. Relax and enjoy it, because I know I certainly will. Um, although, I can't, although I kind of drink because I'm on antibiotics. <laughs> aye, aye. Well, there's some people that won't be having a, a good New Year's, the old uh, Rangers supporters, you know. They'll all be sick right now, wouldn't they? They're all sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? How do they feel? How, any Rangers fans listen, how do you feel? The media bums you up as if he's were something special. You're the easiest group in that Europa League, garbage teams. Because you beat a, beat a couple of garbage teams and you have wee teams like Livingston and Dundee and that sitting back to you, he's a some team. Eh? You come to Celtic Park with an off form Celtic, bear that in mind, and you were humbled severely. Celtic yeah. missed a lot of clear chances. The game could have been 5 nothing. so bear that in mind. If that's an off-form Celtic and you're the best team in Scotland, apparently, according to the media, where does that leave you? And your new player. Who's the guy that was linked with Celtic? Silver, was it? Silver, aye. And he chose them because they're the best team in Scotland. 
Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it. You said I've scored six goals in two years. Yeah, I'm right. trembling. I'm trembling in my boots. Uh, oh, you should have went for gold, silver. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, the press bummed them up to be this thing that they're, they're not. And many times did they, did, 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 does the press do that? Many times have you heard this story over and over again? And the same, it's the same outcome every single year, apart from the COVID season. Aye, it's absolutely unbearable, Xander. You know what I mean? I don't know. They're obviously trying to annoy people with that. Trying to give them all the, the hype that's totally unwarranted. I think they'd one shot in the cup final, won it? They're absolutely garbage. I've said it all along. So, you know, they, they get out there, lucky to get away with 2 1 a day, if you ask me. Apart from yeah. a couple of moments of pressure at the end, one at the end of the first half, and a wee bit probably the end of the second half. Uh, nah. They're not great shakes, are they? No, oh, no, no. I mean, you saw how they played the day. It was long ball, long ball, long ball. And apart from the, they had no plan B. There was nothing after the long ball. That was it. Punt the ball. No matter where you are in the park, punt that ball into Celtic's box. That's their plan. That's their game plan. Because they think we struggle for set pieces. Aye. Aye. Well, we do struggle a wee bit, but I'm not going to struggle, struggle against that garbage. I don't know why teams like Motherwell and all that kind of take points off of them. What is it? What do you think's happening there? I don't know, John, because, you know, they give us some game, didn't they? Teams like Motherwell and, you know, uh, Hearts and, you know, teams that have 10 points off of St. Johnson. Um, they always give us a tough game. That's 2 nothing to St. Mirren, by the way, against Aberdeen. If anybody's interested. Uh, that's, 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 that, that, that's who we play next, obviously, St. Mirren, so they're beating Aberdeen 2 nothing. Aye, where was the performance like against Rangers? Know what I mean? No, no, well, you know, you know what my feeling is on, uh, you know, when it comes to St. Mirren playing Rangers, it's a different, it's a different team they're playing, isn't it? Um, it's different tactics they're set out today. So we'll watch to see. Will you watch for the tactics are going to be in Tuesday night when we turn up? So that's all I'll say on that, John. Um, all right, that we'll leave the game there for now, John. We'll leave the game there. Brilliant win for Celtic. They're absolutely outstanding. Uh, it just makes the New Year and the Hockey and Age just that wee bit more special, doesn't it, John? It certainly does, right? We I mean, all sleep peacefully tonight, but the other mob, they'll be rolling about. Why, why, why? Aye. <laughs> 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 right. And I also thought that the, the Celtic fans were brilliant today, weren't they? Uh, you asked them to make a lot of noise in the last podcast, John, and that's exactly what they did, didn't they? They never stopped for start to finish. Uh, exactly, aye. Well, if the Rangers fans are rolling about in the pillars saying why, 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 I'll tell you why, because you came to the home of the champions, just a better team, that's why. Exactly, yeah. And that's, that's the bottom line, isn't it? You know, as you say, we might go off for them, but when it matters and it means something, we'll turn up, and we did, we turned up the date. Exactly. We just need to turn up every game we know to the end of the season. That same performance, that will do nicely. Yeah, exactly, John. Yeah. All right, John. Uh, where are the comments? Any comments for us? I, I can grab a few of them if you want. So, the last few days, it was only me. The last two podcasts, it was only me. So, apologies to everybody because I'm quite boring on one. I don't know what to say half the time. You probably noticed. But, uh, we need to keep it ticking over till Xander's better. He still sounds uh, pretty bad to me, so leave a wee comment, ask them to get better. We hope you're better soon, Xander, because it is rough having the flu and chest infections and all that. I know how bad it is, or it can be, but uh, anyway. Aye, bad, really bad, John. This, this is the worst flu. This is obviously me getting better. The last four days were really bad. I don't know if wants to hear my woes, but um, if you get the flu, um, the best thing you can do is just Lie in your bed till it goes away. Simple as that. So I hope, I hope nobody, no Celtic fans get it. <laughs> I hope nobody aye. gets it. Because this flu is quite bad. Aye, aye. Well, you still sound happier than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over the moon many day, over the moon. Uh, aye, and, if, and if we can get if we can get to phase if we can get to phase four, John, like we said weeks ago, win the next four games, we're back on track. 
If we can beat St Mirren on Tuesday, I think it is. If we can beat St Mirren, John, then uh, we're in a good place, I think. Exactly, aye. But, uh, big performance needed against St Mirren. We'll touch on that just before we close. Anyway, Xander, I'll get some comments ready. Yeah. Uh, well, I've got them ready. So first up was Paul McComb, who says he was confident, John. It will be a rocking park, Ed. Thanks for that, Paul. Yeah, cheers, Paul. Um, somebody called Celtic Forever. <laughs> That's you, Xander. <laughs> says, says, uh, Thanks for covering for me, John. Should be back for tomorrow. Well, you're, you're back for the day, so that's good, yeah. Xander. Good to hear you back. So I was right. <laughs> aye, aye, you were right. Aye, but only you can predict, predict that, you know. I was doing right. Who was that? Ah, well, you, you sound uh, rough, but you're coping well. Yeah. Uh, one club since 1888 says, I agree, John. We, can, we, we can't we can start with Hitati. Good call. Ah, I said that we can't start with Hitati. Nowhere near ready. But then a badder comes on. Bit weird, that. Uh, well, I thought at one point the game was screaming out for Hitati to come, to come on when you, you had Bernardo on his final, final warning. And you had O'Reilly with these bloodied nose. I thought then was maybe the time to bring on Hitati, John. Who did you think? I thought Hitati was going to come on. Obviously, he never came on, but I'm glad he never came on, Xander, because I don't think he's ready for a, a game like that. But uh, we had Turnbull come on and place a Bernardo. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. Do I? We don't need to talk about that stuff. We can, you can give marks or players if you want quickly after I read a couple, couple more. I'm not going to read all these comments. I'll just pick a couple, a couple of new people. Maybe uh, we would never sell a club for a pound. Says it's unlikely that Hitati will start, but he could come off the last, come on the last 20 minutes. That's what I thought was going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm expecting a big performance from the boys, but we need to take our chances. Yeah. Yeah. He was right. It was a big performance. And we took our chances, so we win the game. Yeah, it's a good point. Good point made there. Yeah. Uh, the Diana won. We absolutely must take our chances as we've been missing way too many. And Kyogo needs to stop missing sitters. This is a must win game, guys, especially since Carter Vickers is out. We have the beating of that mob. Now let's go out and do it. And go out and do it. We did the Diana. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Chances today, John. I don't think we had too many chances today, didn't we? I don't remember their keeper pulling off too many great saves, do you? No, too many, but we did have chances, Xander. Um, but there you go. Um, it doesn't matter how many chances we had or whatever. I think it could have finished 3 4 nothing today, but there you go. We did create enough chances to, to win the game. That's all that matters, Xander. That's it. We won the game and uh. But I thought we should have put the foot down in the gas when they go send out the 10 men, John and Steady, taking their feet off the gas. That's the only thing I would say. But, you know, maybe I'm being too picky uh, because they sort of came into it when they go send out the 10 men, funnily enough, didn't they? I well, we had 15 minutes. It never really did anything with it, so... That's, well, that's, that, what, that's, that's what I was going to say, actually. The Tavernier scored that goal, and it was a nice goal, right? we have done absolutely nothing in the game apart from that. No, no, I don't rate. I told you, I don't rate the guys. Maybe good for a penalty spot and a, a set piece. And speaking of penalty spots, uh, Paul McComb says, John, it was a waterlogged penalty spot. Well, I say that in the podcast. It was a waterlogged penalty spot. That's why the game was cancelled. So <laughs> moving on. Uh, yeah, definitely. You can't kind of take a penalty, John, when it's covered in water. No, 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 no. no. They had to cancel that. Quick, quick walk around the eighteen yard boxes. Now we can't play in that. <laughs> Can I take penalties for that? Right, okay. Um, <laughs> well, right. you go for this. Anyway, how, how can the amazing Tav score for that? That's a puddle on the penalty spot. That's not acceptable. No, um, no. You can't have that. Uh, Roseanne says, I'm, in the, I'm as nervous as hell, but here goes. I'm saying 3 1. And then she gave her times. And you won. Roseanne, you won it. You're the prize yeah, I, winner. It was and 10, she says, se 10 seconds out. She was, John. 10 seconds out. Brilliant guess. Well done, Roseanne. And congratulations. Just to interrupt, John. Congratulations, Roseanne. That's two. You've now won. And I'll say to everybody, enter the competition. Is that all you need? That's what you have to do. Keep entering because you will win these Framed Legends prints. You will win one eventually. 
That's Roseanne one two now. How much gave out? Many of these we gave out now, John. Eight. Ah, it's quite a lot, aye. And you don't need to be a member of uh, Mensa to win one of these prizes. There's no big hard quiz. Guess the minute and seconds of the game, the goal, the first goal, that's all you need to do. And Roseanne went on to say, well done, John. Hurry back, Xander. Next next time, John, have a wee glass of water with you. Because my throat was dry. But thanks for that, Roseanne, and well done in winning the print. Yeah, well done. Congratulations. And commiserations to everybody that entered. No, I've got a list of names here, John, to go through everybody that entered, but I forgot to do it this time, but Thanks to everybody that entered anyway. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Keep entering. Aye. That's all I'll say. Keep entering. Well, a lot of the, co- the comments were competition entries, but I'm not going to read them all out because none of them won it. But thanks for all your efforts, guys, and commiserations to you. Don't forget to leave a comment next time and have your guests for the next game. Uh, James Doran says, Celtic will be up for the Glasgow Derby tomorrow. I like the use of the Glasgow Derby word. That's what I use. No such thing <laughs> as old fun. Yeah, uh, but just, old- just to interrupt you there, John. Did you hear Neil Lennon saying that on the telly the day? Uh, when, you're play, when, when you're playing in the old Fulham game, he says Neil Lennon. I was surprised at that, to be honest with you. you know, I him, get it right, Neil. I get yeah. it right. It's no, old, getting, it's no old Fulham. He's getting confused. We were playing against old Fulham. Um, anyway. <laughs> That's it. That's it. James, James Doran says, Celtic will be up for the Glasgow Derby tomorrow and we'll take the game to Sefco early doors, and we'll come out victorious 2-0. That was my guess, James. Uh, but thanks for commenting, James Doran. Uh, both wrong. Uh, both wrong, but both close. You're two minutes away for the uh, correct score there, wasn't it? This would have scored in the 89th minute, wasn't it? He scored. No, he did. I think it was. Um, because no, there's nothing you can do about a goal like that. It's, that's going to no matter what happens. So, yeah. yeah. Aye. Yeah, good, good effort, I suppose. But it's... and then she's as good as a mile, as they say, two one, two nothing. Doesn't matter as long as you win the game, isn't it? That's the Aye, well, thing. nice free kick to have in here, but uh, I hope you're feeling the hurt. We'll <laughs> <laughs> be uh, feeling it. We'll be feeling it. Oh, I'll be feeling it all right. And it it's wasn't even, it was a lovely free kick, Xander, but it wasn't the best goal of the game. That's Kyogo's. That was a oh, Kyogo. Uh, Kyogo was the best goal of the game. Aye. Ability. Um, you, you need ability to do that. Aye, no, that's something that's Tavernier it. doesn't have. Um, no, hit and hope. Uh, who else we got? Last one. And it's Colin Stewart. If Cal Mack and Matt play well and Dyson on their pen guy, we win, as in Dyson on Tavernier. That's what he means by that. Dyson on their penalty guy, mm-hmm. we'll win. Dyson did they mark him. I think Palmer did a great job there. Uh, they're not as good as Pundit current buns and laptop loyal think as you say John hail hail so laptop loyal he's having a go at the media there or the Rangers fans on the internet the laptop loyal think they're amazing obviously but me yeah. personally I've said it all along they're utter garbage and that's why he's saying as you say John uh, aye, utter garbage uh, Colin I don't rate them at all I've watched their games and I'm thinking Look at the state of them. They're just a bad, bad team, Zander. If anybody thinks different, let us know in the comment. I think they're a terrible team. No, nah, well. You know, you're gonna uh, you're gonna beat Livingston at home, you're gonna beat Dundee at home, you're gonna beat and that's what this guy's run a game. Who's he played that's uh, been a half decent team? Aberdeen, who should have beat them when they but uh wasn't it for Rangers, Rangers getting their usual last minute penalty, Pitodri. That would have been a win for Aberdeen, but they couldn't beat Aberdeen at Pataudry, right? So that's a semi-decent team, Aberdeen. And then they play us. They played us twice now. Couldn't beat us twice. You know, as soon as they come up against any sort of decent team, they struggle. Aye. Utter garbage. That's all I can say. Aberdeen's took points after them twice this season. That's how good they are. Aberdeen's getting beat with St Mirren right now, of course, 2-0. Uh but uh, that concludes the comments, Sander. You can quickly mark your players. Just a quick one if you want. I'll, I'll go first. Joe Hart, 7 out of 10. Did what he had today. Uh, Narot, well, what's his name? Welsh. He went half injured, of course. I'll give him a 5 for the time he was on. Naroki, 7. I thought he played fantastic. Liam Scales, 9. Greg Taylor, 6. Alistair Johnson, 6.5. Uh, centre of the park, Cal McGregor, eight. Matt O'Reilly, seven. 
Bernardo, seven and a half. Kyogo, for that goal, eight. Taiza Maeda, seven. And who's the other one? Uh, Palmer. Palmer. I'll give Palmer a seven and a half. He kept big move shut again. Uh, big move quiet again, I mean. <laughs> kept him shut enough. Huh? <laughs> right, that's that. He shut him out, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, well, I thought Joe Hart had put off a couple of good saves today, so I'll give him an eight. Arthur Johnson, a seven. Uh, Welsh, seven. Uh, Naraki, when he came on, seven and a half, because I thought he'd done well. Stelzy, eight. Taylor, eight, because I thought B. Taylor was brilliant as well. Uh, played, had a great game, with Taylor, Taylor, the day, actually, I thought, John. Uh, Callum McGregor, nine. Outstanding in the middle of the park. What a performance for Callum today. He just drove and controlled that full midfield. Brilliant, brilliant. Matt O'Reilly, six and a half. I don't think he was as uh, dominant in there as what he normally is. Bernardo, seven and a half. Decent game, I thought. Uh, Palmer, seven and a half. Kyogo, seven and a half. And Dyson, seven. That's my score, right. John. Yeah, who's your man of the match? Uh, Callum. Callum McGregor. Just thought he just, I just thought he controlled the full game, John. Thought he was outstanding. Yeah, kind of disagree with that, Xander. That was a great performance for Kyle McGregor. I gave him an eight. You've given him a nine. I've given uh, my man of the match to Liam Scales, who I thought was outstanding again for start to finish. No, he makes Scales eyes. He's, uh, he's turned out to be some player for us, isn't he, Scales? Aye, Aberdeen getting beat 2 0 with St Mirren. They could do with big Liam Scales back, eh? Very yeah, well, that's true, yeah. That's true. Uh, the player, he, you know, I thought Big Scales was outstanding. He, he has been a, a consistent performer for Celtic, I think. Even in the games we get beat with Kamarnock and uh, Hearts, I, th- I still think Liam Scales never put a foot ring in the games. Uh, no, no, I, I think that was a masterful display for uh, Big Liam Scales today, Xander. Him and yeah. Callum McGregor. Both outstanding, and we've both picked them as men of the match, so that says it all. Yeah, that's it. We've seen a different Celtic now from what we saw against Hearts and Kamala, John. Eh? What, a, what a difference. Oh, absolutely. Aye. 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 Great performance. Always tough derby games, you know. It doesn't matter if well, they're going into that game. Rangers is apparently the form team. You know, like, like Colin Stewart says, the laptop loyal and all that one praise them. We're going to do this, we're going to do that. The Scottish media, oh, they're outstanding. What a team. And they come to Celtic Park and play an off form Celtic and get humbled. So there you go. Absolutely mm-hmm. amazing day, Xander. Just absolutely chuffed to bits with that as all Celtic fans are right now. Yeah, yeah. And I've got to remember the conditions we had to play under there. I know both teams had to play their conditions, but we don't play the long ball, John. They do. So that's the conditions are ideal for the long ball game. Uh, but we had to try and play football on a really, really rough surface the other day. Eh? I thought the surface was, surface was actually no too bad. It looked rough for a distance. You could see patches on it and stuff. But it was quite smooth, you know. It wasn't it bumpy or anything. Uh, but we're just lucky they didn't put the sprinklers on because it might have been uh, postponed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, backfired on them, didn't it? They're now, they're now playing catch-up, John. Uh, they've got to win. They saw one saying, oh, we're two games in hand. We're going to narrow it back down to two points. I think that's what Boyd said today. You've got to win these games. You know, you've got to actually go and win these games. And that's not easy, especially <laughs> after you've just been beat with your biggest rivals. Better team. A team that shows that, that they're the better, the better team year in, year out. So they've just been beat by that better team, John, and now they've got to go and win these two games in hand. That's not going to be easy for them. Absolutely not, no. But uh, that's their confidence there, uh, taking a bit of a stuff in there, isn't it? That's uh, their manager, Mr. Marvellous. What a sign and that, what a guy. What is it he says? Celtic were half form, they get beat with Command up, then they get beat with Hearts. And what's the first thing he says after the two defeats? We are here to win the league. Was well, the German? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But how did they not say that when they first signed? You know, he waited to Celtic, lost two games, and then that gave him the goal. We're here to win the league. Uh-uh. Yeah. Well, there is still a title race on because if they win their two games in hand, and that's a big if, 
the day closed it to two points, but we're not going to stand still, John. We're going to, we're not going to motor on. The, we are going to get into this January winter break and come back a stronger, better uh, football team for it, for the rest, for the break, aren't we? As soon as we come back, as soon as we come back for that break, John, we're just going to motor on. Yeah, exactly. We'll motor on and win the league. I've no doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, but like you say, there is still a, a title race on. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they win their two games in hand, and we obviously their two games in hand is going to be after the winter break now. Yeah, that's aye, aye. Um, but you know, if we win against St. Mirren, I think we're going to win the league. That's what I've says. It just annoyed me that manager saying that right after Celtic lost two games. His big move wasn't open before that, Xander. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. Uh... We took our foot off the gas a wee bit, John, and let them into it, didn't we? It was, it was sloppy against Hearts, it was sloppy against Kamarnock, you know, but, you know, it's gone, that's gone. Look what we've done since, we've won three games on the bounce. We're going into Tuesday night, hoping it's going to be four games on the bounce. Brilliant display of the day, every player turned up the day, John, that's another thing. Every single one of the boys turned up the day, didn't they? Well, they need that against St Mirren as well, Xander. They'll need to do exactly that against St Mirren. But you're right, every one of them to a man showed up. So I gave them all decent marks in the markup. So I, I, I thought every man showed up. That's the kind of performance that was needed against them. Um, I, look, I'm just ecstatic with the. I haven't even watched the highlights, but I certainly will. I'll do that tonight. Watch the highlights a few times. Yeah. Aye, aye, it's amazing, Xander. Absolutely yeah, amazing. It's, it's uh, I'm just all the Celtic fans are loving it right now, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, it just makes uh, uh, the last few weeks watching our team be off for them. It just makes it all the sweeter now that we're back on for them, John. And we've proved that we're, we're the better team. We don't need to prove it, but we'll have to prove it again to keep the Scottish press quiet again. Maybe keep them quiet for a couple of weeks. Eh? Aye, well, look, even the games we lost. Celtic's problem has been missing sitters. There's been a load of sitters missed. I don't care what anybody says. Celt- I think Celt- even against Hearts and all that, they played well. They pinned them back. If Celtic would take their chances in these games. These games are cricket scores, Zander. They need to finish these easy chances. That, that's been Celtic's problem. Now we've won three games in a row. We're starting to look like we're hitting form. We've hit form, but start hitting the net as well. That's what we need to do. We need to stop uh, passing up these easy chances. Very easy chances. Yeah. And Matt O'Reilly, the day he had to play through the walls, didn't he? He's, I don't know if his nose is broken or not. It might not be, but it looked, it looked kind of quite in a bad way, didn't it? Blood everywhere. Ah, it was a bad one. It was, there was nothing in it. The Rangers player didn't meet it. It's caught me with the trail in there, didn't he? Same with Alistair Johnston, when he jumped up with the Rangers player, he, he elbowed him in the face and he's kidding on, he's injured. It was nowhere near as one as, as bad as the one that I think he got, Matt O'Reilly. Yeah. That was a lot of blood he lost, that boy, the day. Aye, how is that? Is that uh, St Mirren scored again there, by the way, Xander? Have they? Aye. That's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a tough game, John, for us on Tuesday night. That's, that's, uh, that goes without saying. Aye, uh, 3 nothing. it finished, I think. Yeah. Uh, that Pataudry. That Pataudry, that's, uh, that's poor for Aberdeen. Aberdeen were quite poor right enough. I've been just kind of watching it while I'm talking to you a wee bit. Mm-hmm. But, uh, uh, so that's who we're up against next. That's gave him a lot of confidence. But of course, Celtic's got a lot of confidence for that today, winning a big derby game. Uh, and we need to put the same performance in against St Mirren as we did against them. And don't pass up the chances. That's all we can do. Put in the same performance. Do not miss any easy chances. I think Celtic's getting a lift for us today, Xander, and I'm hoping we go into maybe put a few past St Mirren next week. Yeah, yeah, I hope you're right, John. I think we'll be okay against St Mirren. Um, but it's a different game, it's a different day, and it'll be a different podcast. So we'll be back on uh, Monday for the preview, John, for the preview for the St Mirren game. We'll do a wee preview podcast on Monday. Um, anything you want to add before we go, John? No, no, just we're both happy. That's all that matters. And well done for getting through it, Xander. That's good you got through it today. And it's good to have you back because I can't uh, really do this one, man. That's sound too boring. There's, there's nobody to bounce off. <laughs> no, no, you've done a good job, John. You've done a, you done a, a, 
perfect job, no problem there. That was, and I appreciate it as well. Bye, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, Not any problems under, eh? Welcome. No, uh, just, uh, just to finish then, because this is obviously the last podcast of this year. So thank you to everybody that's listened this year to our V channel. We do appreciate it. We hope that all you, all you Celtic supporters have a peaceful and happy new year. Ringing the bells nice and safe. Um, enjoy yourself. The day's result will make it a wee bit easier for you, a wee bit sweeter. Just have a, just have a good time, be safe, and we'll catch you all in the new year. Absolutely, Xander. Hail, hail. And uh, I'll just uh, say exactly what Xander says there. Everybody have a happy new year. I'm sure you will now. But uh, go and enjoy yourself, boys and girls. Fantastic result for the tick. Uh, we look forward to St Mirren and Hail Hail Xander and well done and getting through this. Uh, cheers John and Happy New Year to, to you as well buddy. I'll see you in the new year. Right, cheers Xander, speak to you next time. Hail Hail mate. Hail Hail buddy.